the NTSB releases the final report on the mid-air collision of a helicopter and a gyroplane at Oshkosh last summer. We're gonna go through it on this episode of Taking Off. Hi, I'm Dan Milliken, and the NTSB has issued the final report and docket on the tragic mid-air collision at Air Venture last July 29th. The specifics. An ELA Eclipse tandem gyroplane collided with a rotorway helicopter on the base leg at the ultralight field. The helicopter went straight down and a post-crash fire consumed it, and both occupants were killed. The gyro crashed on top of a parked plane and the two occupants survived with serious injuries. And before I dive into the report and the docket, this one is uh, a bit personal for me. While at AirVenture last July, I had an opportunity to take a ride in a rotorway at the ultralight field on the Wednesday of the event. I was set up with Mark Peterson to ride in his black rotorway, a home-built helicopter kit. Mark was a staple of the home-built rotor community and it was cool to meet him. I showed up at the Wednesday morning briefing and sat next to him. And when the briefing started, Mark brought up the issue with the gyros performing non-standard moves in the pattern. And one guy said, Mark, you can hover. And some of the others laughed. Mark didn't laugh. He was serious about safety. The briefer picked up on it and reminded everyone that there was a sheet for procedures and that for some reason gyros had started a dangerous habit of doing 360 degree turns while in the pattern and that that wasn't allowed. And when the briefing ended, I had a little time before my ride. Mark was uh, taking someone else up first. And when it was my turn, I was almost out of time. I had agreed to a meeting on the other side of the grounds, so I only had time to hastily place two cameras and do one turn in the pattern with Mark. We flew, we chatted, we landed, I pulled the cameras and ran across the grounds to make that meeting, wishing I'd had more time with Mark. I'd like to get my rotor, and I'm intrigued by the community that builds helicopters. Three days later, Saturday, we were finished recording interviews for the In The Hangar show, and me and the other crew were walking gear back to the car when we got the news, a mid-air collision at the ultralight field, and soon more details became available. A gyro collided with a helicopter. Miraculously, the two people in the gyro survived, but it was the rotorway, and both occupants died, and then I found out it was indeed Mark. It's horrifying news already, but when you find out you know the pilot, it's even worse. This past week, the NTSB released the final report on the midair and also the docket. I've gone through them both, and here's what's inside the report. First paragraph includes, during the briefings, event coordinators informed pilots that 360 degree turns in the traffic pattern were prohibited. And again, I personally witnessed that. Post-accident and examinations of both aircraft revealed no evidence of mechanical malfunctions that would have precluded normal operations. The circumstances consistent with the failure of the gyroplane pilot to see and avoid the helicopter while performing a prohibited maneuver. Probable cause and the findings came down to five things. One mentions Mark's inability to spot the gyro, and the other four are on the gyro pilot Eric Bruce and include knowledge of procedures, decision-making judgment, incorrect action performance, and monitoring other aircraft. The gyroplane was a two-seat tandem with Bruce piloting from the front seat. He had picked up a passenger for a demonstration flight and they had not previously met. The rotorway had Mark piloting from the right seat, and he picked up a passenger, Tom Volz, who had just completed his own helicopter build a few months before. There was a GoPro on the rotorway, and the passenger of the gyro shot cell phone footage, including the collision. The NTSB did not make the videos available in the docket, but included a narrative description of both videos with timestamps. At 12.21 p.m., Tom climbed into the helicopter. Two minutes later, Mark let the tower know that they were ready for departure. They took off at 12.24 p.m. Just before 12.26 p.m., the passenger of the gyro started recording on his cell phone. 20 seconds later, Mark announces on the radio that they were at the water tower, one of the reporting stations. At 12.26 and 29 seconds, Mark flinches, and an eighth of a second later, the impact occurs. I could not find any reference to radio calls made by Bruce the gyropilot doesn't mean they didn't happen, but there are no radio transcripts in the docket. 
The gyro came down on a parked Mooney, and fortunately there were no injuries on the ground. For pilot information, Mark had a commercial certificate flight instructor and was 69 years old with 8,000 total hours. He was considered an air safety advisor for flight operations and had flown for several years at AirVenture. Tom was 72, a student with 122 hours total. Eric Bruce was 54 and had a sport pilot certificate with 600 hours total time. It was his first AirVenture to fly demonstration flights at, although he had attended in prior years. Medical information in the final report shows no medication in Mark's system that would adversely affect performance. Neither in the final report or in the docket is any report on toxicology for Eric Bruce, who was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. Following the accident, the EAA has implemented some changes to the procedures, which include a one-strike rule for anyone not conforming to procedures, as well as adding more spotters and standardizing the briefings. In the docket were all the witness statements and several statements by Mr. Bruce. He says he doesn't remember the accident day due largely to head injuries. He says he sustained a concussion and other traumatic brain injuries, including two brain bleeds, six broken ribs, a bruised lung, facial sutures, lacerations, and a broken nose. He writes that he's painfully aware that the injuries are nothing compared to the tragic loss of life. He recalls attending the safety meeting on Friday, the day before, but doesn't recall Saturday's briefing. Sign-in sheets reveal he was at both. Other witnesses testified to 360 degree turns being verbally mentioned as prohibited moves. Bruce does not recall hearing that. In his statement to the NTSB in the accident report, he writes that though he doesn't recall the flight, that from watching the materials available on the internet, the NTSB prelim report, post-accident discussion, he mentions a slowdown due to the Airbus making room for more departing traffic. He writes, because my aircraft was a gyroplane, I could not hover. As traffic ahead of me slowed, I was required to make a 360 degree turn for spacing. He was required. I could find no evidence of Airbus or any other pilots requiring him to do a 360 degree turn. He then mentions other pilots telling him that he announced making a 360 degree turn of which I can find no evidence in the docket, not in witness statements and no radio transcripts. He continues to write that looking at what transpired that he believes the 360 turn for spacing was safer than the procedure briefed in writing, the sidestep to the inside and passing of slower traffic. He writes that a go-around would have put him in conflict with departing traffic, but I talked to several pilots who were there and one who was in the pattern at the time of the crash. A sidestep inside would have kept him clear from departing traffic and that was the safety plan. A handout of the procedures with the sidestep is included in the docket and was handed to each pilot in the briefing. In the docket is testimony from the Saturday briefer. He testifies Mr. Bruce had done a 360 on Friday and there were words exchanged on frequency between him and the aircraft following him. It was way too close. Because of this, the briefer on Saturday was very specific. He iterated no 360 in the pattern. You must continue in the pattern, stay and pass to the left away from the crowds, which leads us to one of two things. The 360 as an attempt for spacing or the 360 as a fun maneuver. Again, talking to witnesses, they don't recall the gyros performing 360 turns in years past. It was something new, performed at the first day Monday. And I certainly witnessed the safety meeting on Wednesday when this was brought up and expressly prohibited. And what I heard wasn't the gyros wanting to perform the maneuver for spacing, but more for sport. What one witness told me was hot dogging, his term. So was Bruce hot dogging or turning for spacing? And does it really matter? The move was prohibited. He had done it on Friday and it was addressed on frequency and in the briefing on Saturday, yet he did it again. Two lives were lost. And at this date, there have been no criminal charges filed against Mr. Bruce. I find it interesting, uh, a study in semantics in the docket when when Bruce mentions the term, it's always 360 degree for spacing. When the NTSB writes the term, it's always prohibited 360 turn. I don't understand why the gyro pilot would double down on the 360 turn being performed for safety when there's a mountain of evidence that it was strictly prohibited. But maybe I'm missing something. 
something that would make sense of Mr. Bruce's performing the prohibited 360 degree turn. If you know why, please educate me in the comments below. This is a very sad report, and my condolences to the families, which I've gotten to know a little bit. I've seen firsthand how hard they've been impacted. And in summary, it comes down to the judgment of the gyro pilot performing an expressly prohibited move, and not for the first time. Look, I've admitted, and I'll admit now, that sometimes I don't have good judgment. It's a reminder to me to exercise good judgment, and hopefully to all of you. It's for me that I always sign off with good judgment trumps superior skills, and this tragic case exemplifies that. Thanks for watching, and please visit our sponsors' links in the description below. They make our shows possible, and they're all run by fellow pilots. They're great people with great products and services, so please visit them. We'll see you next time, and stay safe.